Hey guys, welcome to episode 2 of my Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial series. Today I'm going to be covering how to edit the leveled lists so that you can hand place which enemies you want to encounter in the game. Now, the first thing that you need to know is where to find the leveled lists. So, if we go to the Actors tab on the left hand side and go down to Leveled Characters, here is where you will find it. Now, ignore all of this at the top and start at L char. That stands for Leveled Character. So we are going to begin right here ambient creatures if we double click that you can see foxes hares etc now what you need to know here is what this number reflects on the side this does not mean these are level one foxes and level one hares this just means you can encounter them at that level so for example if we were to place a giant in here giants by default show up to you at level one even though the giants themselves are something like level 38 so you can still encounter them at level 1, but they are not level 1 themselves. So you need to keep that in mind. You, you want to be careful, uh, let's say we put a, a really high level werewolf in here, but we leave it as level 1. You could get absolutely destroyed by walking out into a forest or something, because a werewolf who's really high level has attacked you. Maybe you want it that way, and that's entirely up to you, but if you don't, then you need to be careful what you're doing. So, let's say we do want to add werewolves, what we are going to do... Let's say we want them in the forests. So we begin at L Char Animal Forest, double click that, and we could add one here. So just click in here and click new and type in ENC where. And then we have these werewolves. Now oh god. Now these are all different levels of werewolves. The first one I believe is level one, then it's like six, twelve, twenty, blah blah blah. I know the level six, uh, the 061 is actually level 38. So if we were to leave it like this, we would be able to encounter a level 38 werewolf at level 1. Very dangerous. So you may want to change this to something like, I don't know, 30. So that when you're level 30, you can run into a level 38 werewolf, or you may want to go all the way and stick it as 38 just to be absolutely safe. That's up to you. So you can see here... Because I've edited the number a second time, it's actually created two of them. So again, you need to be careful of that because let's say we... Let's delete this one and let's say we just keep clicking new on this one. Then we now have four of these. Now what that means is there's going to be four times as much chance for us to run into one of these as there is these two. You want to be careful of that again. You need to learn to balance it as well as you can. So you may want to do something like this. Have one werewolf and then raise the bears and wolves to three each. So there's three times as much chance as coming, of coming across a bear at, or a wolf than a werewolf. So really six times as much chance of finding one of these than you will these. Because you may want them to be suitably rare since they are werewolves. What you can also do is, let's say, in the marshlands, we... If we scroll down, you can see there's no spriggans here. Now, to me, a spriggan fits in perfectly in the marshlands. So what we're going to do, click New, then go in here, ENC Sprig. And we have a spriggan. Now, default spriggans are level 8, so we may want to set that to 8 so that we cannot encounter them till we're level 8. But you may just want to leave it as 1 because the difference between 1 and 8 isn't a huge deal. There it is. And... Um, that's probably fair enough, so you, you could set it to 5 or something, I don't know. Now, we may also want Spriggan Matrons for when you get higher level, so if we click new on the Spriggan, scroll down to Matron. Now, Matrons are level 18, I believe, so you may want to set this to like something like 15, or you can put it as 18, whatever. So now, in the Marshlands, we have a chance of coming across a Spriggan or a Spriggan Matron when we are level 5 or 15, respectively. Again, you can set these levels to whatever you want. You can, if you want, go into all of these leveled lists and change every single level to one so that you can encounter any enemy at any level. That, again, is completely and utterly up to you. Okay, now what I'm going to show you is something a little bit more advanced. Now, if we go down to all here, and let's say we want to create some slightly custom enemies. Now I'm not talking about custom textures and meshes, I'm talking about just editing existing enemies. Let's say we want to create bear cubs for example because there aren't any in the game. If we go to here and type in, uh, sorry, go to all and then go to the filter tab and type in bear 
it will bring up everything to do with bears in the game. Now if we click on the form type that will alphabetize them. It will not alphabetize them here, it will alphabetize them on the right. So it will alphabetize them by what type they are. So you can see these are armor, um, you know, class, etc. Now, if we scroll down and we find ENC. ENC stands for encounter. So these are the ones we want to edit. So let's say we want to make regular bear cubs. If we right click this and click duplicate, then we find our duplicate which is right here. We double click our duplicate, which means we haven't we haven't messed around with the original one and you want to make sure you don't do that. We've just duplicated it to use it as a base. Now if we uh, rename the ID encounter bear cub, this here is just the ID it will show up as in the creation kit. This here, however, is the name it will show up in the game. So we could just type in bear cub, and in game that will be called a bear cub now. Now, what else do we want to do? We probably want to make this smaller than an average bear. Yogi. So, if we go to the preview button here, you'll see I've gone to the traits tab and then clicked on preview. It shows us, what the hell was that noise? It shows us our bear. Now, if we go to the height and then type in 0 0.5, you can see it's much smaller. So if we want a good comparison, we leave it as 0 0.5 and then just press 1 and we can see the difference in height and size. So we want it about 50% I would say. So there you go, now it's smaller. But also we probably want it a bit weaker than a regular bear. Now the easiest way for us to do this is just a level it's a, uh, sorry, edit its actual level. Now a regular bear is level 12, so we may want to put this as level 8 or 5 or something like that. So now we have created a bear cub that is smaller and lower level than a regular bear and it will show up as being called a bear cub in game because we renamed it in this window. You must remember this is the window for the name in game. This is the name in the creation kit. Now we click OK and it will ask us to create a new form. Select no, select yes. Now, wow, okay, right. So we want to place our bear cub in the leveled lists. Now we go back into our actors tab and leveled character. Now you can see because we've got bear in the filter tab, there are two bear, bear only uh, leveled lists. So we want to stick it in those first of all. Double click, right click a regular bear, click new, scroll down to our bear cub, and there we have it. It is now in the leveled lists. It will show up at level one just like a regular bear. That's fine, we'll do that. Now we go into the bear planes one. Do the exact same thing, right click on a bear, click new, scroll down to our bear cub, we'll leave it at level 1 because the regular bear shows up at level 1, that's fine. Now, remove bear from this filter and go back into L characters. Now the lists that you need to worry about the most are these ones, I will highlight them for you. Give me a second. These are the ones that affect most of the enemy encounters in the game in the wild. You do not need to worry too much about anything else, but you need to worry about these ones over anything. Especially if you want to put something in here that doesn't normally appear. If you are creating a custom bear or something, then you also want to put it in the L, car L character bear lists. Just like if you're creating a custom skeleton, say you're making a skeleton mage that shoots ice from one hand or something, you want to put that in the L char skeleton list as well and then wherever in these lists that you want it to appear in game and that is really all there is to it now all you have to do is hand place what you want and where you want it and it will work it's as simple as that just remember to adjust the levels appropriately so that you don't run into things that are too powerful or too weak for your level it's really up to you although like i said for example these frost trolls will appear at the respective levels you could edit all of those Let's say, just do that and type in 1, then at level 1 you could run into a frost troll. If you want to get butchered, it's entirely up to you. If you want to make this game more hardcore, more Morrowind-like, hey, that's your choice and you can do that absolutely fine. And now you know how to do it. Now, just quickly again, I'm going to show you um, how to create that um, skeleton mains that we talked about earlier. Just in case anyone wants to see. So the easiest way for us to do this is not to just type in skeleton like we did earlier with bear. The easiest way is to type in ENC skeleton and then go down to our all, all tab at the bottom. And then we have all of these different types of skeleton encounters. Let's say we want a large skeleton that has two hander. 
Here we go, this one here, encounter skeleton 01 melee two-hander. That means it is an encounter with a skeleton that will be melee and will always have a two-hander. So, if we use this as a base, we right-click it and click duplicate. Now, here is our duplicate. This little asterisk star here means that it is a duplicate. And it also says duplicate in the name. Now, if we double-click this one, we do exactly what we did with the bear. We rename it in the creation kit first of all so that we know how to find it. Let's go say we want to call it a skeleton titan. We will name it encounter skeleton 01 melee two-hander titan. Now, the name we want in game, for example, is skeleton titan. So there we go. It will show up as being called skeleton titan in game. So if we go back to our traits tab, which we should be on by default, and we click the preview button down here, we can preview our skeleton. We can zoom in and zoom out, although it's a little funky. Now, let's say we want this bigger because it's a titan. We put it as 1.5. That's how big it will be in comparison. Much bigger. You may want it uh, 2, for example. You may want an absolutely humongous skeleton. That's absolutely fine. Up to you. Whatever you want. Now, let's say we want to buff the hell out of this because skeletons are weak. The easiest way for us to do this is, first of all, change the level. It will start off at level 1, because skeletons in this game are level 1. Most of them, anyhow. Let's say we want this to be level 20, which isn't too high, but it's a lot better than 1. It's still going to be pretty weak, because its base health is just 20. The easiest way to counter this is to edit the health offset. That simply means it will add on to its base health. So, for example, it has a base health of 20. It will calculate to being 210 health because of its level. We want that a lot higher, so let's have a health offset as 200, of 200, and then we click on Auto Calculate, and it will go to 410 calculated health. So now that's going to have a lot more health. Also here we can change the speed. If we want to put this down to 80, it will be 80% of the speed of a regular skeleton, because we want it to be kind of large and lumbering, and it has a two-hander, and it's just kind of slow and powerful. So we can do that. You can also offset the stamina, add another 100 or something, and then it will have more stamina than a regular skeleton. And that's, again, all you need to do. But let's say we want it to be a mage. First of all, we'll save this one. Click no, click yes, just like before. Now, if we want a mage that also has a one-hander, we'll use this one as a base. This is an encounter with a skeleton that is melee one-handed. Right-click it, click duplicate. Now, we'll double-click our duplicate. Duplicate. Eventually. There we go. Okay. Melee one-hander, remove this bit, and we'll call it Melee one-hander mage. And in-game, we'll name it Skeleton Mage. So, first things first is we want to edit the... We probably want to leave it about the same height as a regular skeleton. You could make it slightly smaller, like 0 0.9 or something. Again, this is entirely your choice, whatever you want to do. Now, we'll edit the level. Let's say we want to put that to 15. We'll give it 150 health offset. And you really want to give it Magicka, because... Be because skeletons have zero magicka. So even at such and such level, you know, 15 level, it's still going to have no magicka. So you absolutely have to offset that some magicka. So we'll give it 250 so it can actually cast a decent amount of spells at us. Now what we must do is go to the spell list tab here, right click, click new, and let's say we want to give it frostbite, which is pretty standard for undead to use in this game. Scroll all the way down to F and select Frostbite, but we want to put it in our left hand because he's going to be wielding the sword in his right. So select Frostbite, left hand. Now, he will be able to cast Frostbite with his left hand. If we go to the Inventory tab, this is what he will be carrying. He will have a leveled Draugr weapon that will be a one-handed sword with a 50% chance of having a shield. That's what that means. We don't want him to have a shield. So we're going to go to this tab and scroll up and just set it on one-hander, which means he will always have a one-hander, but he will never have a shield. Now, this is Loot Draugr Random Item. That is what Draugrs uh, generally drop. Let's say we want him to have something along the lines of scrolls, because he's a mage. So if we right-click in this tab and click New, if we type in Loot Warlock, and then we scroll down, this is what a Warlock can typically drop. And if we scroll down to scrolls, the 0, 05 and the 100 means, this means Warlock scrolls, but a 0.5% chance to drop. And this means a 100% chance. This means you will get, always get one scroll from this guy, but it will be completely random. So there we go. We can do that. But let's say we want him to always have, I don't know, three scrolls. So we can do that. So now he'll have three scrolls, his sword, and he'll have some random Draugr gear. 
we could do the same thing here right click on the warlock scrolls and click new and we could go to the 0 5 and set that as 1 so that means he will always have three scrolls and he'll have a 5% chance of having a fourth again this is entirely up to you be creative do whatever you want I hope now you understand how to edit the leveled lists and how they work. Just remember above all else that these do not affect interior cells, dungeons, things like that. You have to hand place enemies in those. So that will only affect the overworld. You must remember that. But like I say, you can create your own custom enemies here. You, you can't get too crazy because they kind of have to look the same you know because we're not creating custom textures or meshes yet but you can do that if you know how to but you need photoshop and editing programs to be able to do that but just in game you know we can make things bigger or smaller give them different weapons different spells you can even put gear on them for example just quickly if we go to default outfit you can put outfits on this guy but you gotta remember if we click preview it doesn't change anything because he's a skeleton. There's only a few things that he can wear, so you have to keep that in mind as well. But there you go, if you're creating a regular bandit or something, you can dress him in whatever the hell you want there. There you go. That's how to do it. That's how to create custom enemies using the existing enemies in the game. You now know how to edit their stats, what the stats mean. You know how to edit their height. You know how to change their name in game, their name in the creation kit. You know how to edit the leveled lists, and you know what the leveled lists mean, hopefully. I hope this tutorial helped. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment sections below. Please remember to give the video a thumbs up if it was helpful for you. I hope it was. Please remember to hit the subscribe button, top left above the video, not on the video. And you'll subscribe to my channel. I regularly post creation kit tutorials, mod reviews, mod let's plays, and a lot of other things. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.